Don't be surprised at a road transport man showing you a railway station. Mr. Smythe, the station master at Killin, could tell you that road and rail work very much side by side these days. Here's an example from my depot. I'd like to tell you about it. Bertlow and his pals were no railwaymen, though for two years they lived and slept on the line. Well, not exactly. Now, why did they find themselves in this particular situation? First, let me say they were all hand-picked. Bob Cuthbertson, the youngest, a fine loader and driver. Canny Geordie Joyner, 58 and 38 years in transport. Dave Oliphant, the man in charge. They come no finer than Dave. Looked up to by all, including many a customer. And Bert, who at 18 stone, fills his boots. Cook and driver, all in one. But most of all, a team who for two years lived and worked together. As I said, they were not there to run the railway. But the railway was an important factor in their daily life. In fact, what the train brought up Glenogo was what they were there to take away. Which was why Mr. Smythe, the station master, could often be seen talking to Dave Oliphant. That was in the nature of the whole operation. Every morning at six, that was the deadline, in front of them a journey to be measured not so much in distance as by the nature of the going. Myself, I've been in transport like Dave Oliphant since the days of horses, but I'll tell you this was the toughest job I'd ever assigned a lorry to. Loading was always done the night before. They knew every detail of their job, they had faith in the vehicles they were to drive and in the service and maintenance that backed them. So once more, let's go. It's time to be away. two miles distance, but with seven and a half tons of cement aboard, the route placed tremendous strain on gears and brakes, and on men. Ask Bert, even with his 18 stone and 30 years experience, what it felt like once they turned onto the new road at Kennock. The road had been specially built, but without much thought for the vehicles that would be using it. Still, it was a road, and Scotland needs them. This one, when the job was done, would be taken over by the council, for it linked Glenlochy with Glenlyon. Or you might ask Dave, only a man who's driven vehicles since the days of oil lamps could tell you what it means to lug 20,000 tons of cement up roads like this. This is country where nature, for all her savage beauty, can play a dirty trick or two. certain seasons of the year it was rain and yet more rain and this country was well designed to catch it. 
that river can rise six feet in as many hours. No point in swearing at the weather, for rain was the very basis of the operation. Rain to be trapped and turned to power. Here was where they were heading for once more. Giora Dam, one of quite a few in Scotland's hydroelectric scheme. Everybody knows that dams are made of concrete and concrete from cement. Poor chappies of my acquaintance are very, very sure of that engineering fact. Ask any of the poor what their shoulders will feel like tonight after doing this return journey twice a day. Twice a day for two years and not a lorry off the road. Plenty of time to ponder the natural beauties of their country, but up here only a fool would take his eyes off the road for long. The folk up here have a saying that you can live without your friends, but not without your neighbours. More or less the same prevails, it has to, with those who work here. These fellows we got to know well, using a fast dying skill to help the hydroelectric fit into the landscape. I suppose it's natural for these inhabitants to feel they have the right of way. After all, the rules of the road are but an intrusion when you've never had a road. Norman Douglas, Edward of the Megarney estate, should be glad though. Nigh on seven days, he's been in the habit of walking 20 to 25 miles a day on his own two legs. For Norman, it's back each evening to a bowl of steaming toddy. The dogs look as if they need it too. And now they're almost there. But the last approach to Giora is no place to get excited. It's a bad stretch. Still, in spite of hazards, well before nine o'clock in the morning, Dave, Geordie, Bob and Bert will have another 30 tonnes of cement up at Giora Dam. And another load to come. Two trips a day. Twenty thousand tonnes were carried at seven and a half tonnes per lorry per trip. I myself usually arrive on a Wednesday in my little green van, and here I am. I used to look forward to it, a little chat with the boys to see how they were faring. They always seemed happy enough, though they only saw their families at weekends, and sometimes not even then. Bambi and her daughter, I should explain, were a walking tribute to the Blarney. The Irish navvies had trained them. They were fussy too. Milk chocolate only. Bambi even knocked at the cookhouse door with her pretty head. 
had plenty to think about on these visits. When you see an eight-wheeler, for example, taking tunnel rails down a gradient of one in four, it brings home to you the hard realities of what a vehicle has to put up with under conditions like these. That brings home to me what every driver knows and swears by, the need for expert and conscientious maintenance. A vehicle, like a man, responds to proper treatment, and without boasting, all our vehicles get what these are getting. Modern equipment in the maintenance depots ensures that nothing should go wrong. And nothing much did in these two years, each weekend, half the vehicles concerned were greased, washed, and most important, the brakes adjusted. Transport brings enough problems when you're mobile. It's stupid to add to them with unnecessary breakdowns. Problems like this, for example. Another dam up at Lubriach, and also my pigeon. When these hydroelectric schemes are finished, that's not quite the end. There's plant to be removed. Competition is keen, but there's a lot of work to be had if you're on the spot at the right time. 2,000 tons of it right here. A hefty job which we discharge to the entire satisfaction of the customer. <laughs> 